happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows. On the podcast network, it's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stall, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour. A cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is not just a bar, it's a restaurant where they serve handcrafted food and spirits. They have a whole new menu and a radically new happy hour. It's right up here on the wall from 3 to 6 every day. All drinks are half price, and all the starters and bar food is half price as well. And that accounts for the reason why there's so many friggin' people in here, I suppose. I've never seen this many people at 3 o'clock. What the hell are all these people doing at 3 o'clock in there? Well, it? well, it's 4 o'clock. It's 4, it's four. Yeah. It's 4 o'clock. Oh, that might explain it. They're just okay. getting started early. Our yep. theme today is being played by Andrew Duhon. Thanks, Andrew. Pretty nice. It's beautiful. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I think you can probably... How do we fade that down now, though? <laughs> Rob Steinberg is playing trumpet. Just move his microphone. And Terry McDermott is humming along to, in his head. In my head, yes. Yeah, very nice. Thanks, Andrew. That's a beautiful right. start to the show. Right, Which Foreman's on vacation, so we're not playing his. Uh, his. So, so who's here's who's here? Rob Steinberg is an actor. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good to be back with it's you. It's nice to see you back here again. If you don't know who Rob is, he's he's uh, he's an actor. He was in the Oscar-winning film Twelve Years a Slave. Uh, you've got a list of credits as long as you're on, but I'm not going to read all of them. No, don't read but all of them. But just to give you a vague idea of what he's been up to, the last thing he did was Deepwater Horizon with Mark Wahlberg. Yep. And, uh, and the soon-to-be-released LBJ. With Woody Harrelson as Lyndon Johnson. Now, how is that? Well, let's get on to that in a minute. <coughs> yeah. How was it, good or bad? Um, I think it was very good. I mean, it's not the same as the Brian Cranston one. Um, Who's which, Brian Cranston? Anybody yeah. know who Brian Cranston is here? Laurie yes. White yes. is here. Yes, yes you have. Brian Cranston, Dermot yes. Knows. Andrew, do you know? I'm no good with the film Never stuff. Never heard Sorry. of Brian Cranston. I think Woody did a real credible job, and Rob Reiner directed, so, you know, there's always his touches in there, too. Mm. Is that good? He's a great director. Yeah, he's he? a great director. I mean, he did Spinal Tap. Princess Bride. Never mind that. Is it anything like Spinal Tap, the LBJ? It's nothing like... Documentary, nothing. It's actually exactly like Spinal Tap. That's what I was hoping. Actually, yeah. a friend of mine's actually in the film as well, and he actually showed... Uh, C. Thomas Hull. Oh, yeah. Tommy actually showed me... Uh, when he was in town last, went for a drink, and he actually showed me a picture of the, the crew, the cast, all standing together in full, in full makeup. Yeah. And I got to say, Woody Harrelson looks amazing. He does. He looks like Yeah, really? they all look great. That's the voice great. of Terry McDermott, who's a musician singer in the band Lotus Crush. Correct. Thank you. Whose members include Peter Clayton, Scott Mercado from Candlebox. And uh, Terry also releases music under the name North South with Dave Rosser from the Afghan Wigs, and you may have seen him singing. The national anthem at both the Pelicans and the Saints game. That's right. In the last couple of years. It was the wrong anthem. They didn't let me sing the Scottish one. Uh, yeah. What yeah. is Scottish. the Scottish national anthem? What? The American one? What? <laughs> How does the Scottish national anthem go? Uh, Anything the, like it's the flow, Kazakhstan? The, the Flower of Scotland. It's a beautiful song. Can you do it? Like the Flower of Scotland. When will we see your likes again? That fought and died for. For we but hill and glen. And stood against them. Proud Edward's army and sent them homeward to think again. Add four more verses. Yeah, pretty wow. nice, pretty nice. That's nice, nice. but you know what? Yeah. Thank God we're not Scottish. I would never be able to learn that. That's extremely difficult. Oh, I don't know the other ones. I'm just saying no, you, just, you just, the, it just the didn't melody, put four though, more verses. The melody is difficult, isn't it? No, not if you know it. Not if you're Scottish. <laughs> I mean, you I don't think I what do melody it. is harder than our national anthem? It, 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 it goes like a, it's a four octave range. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's very yeah. American. It's like, yeah. w- wait a minute, they're making national anthems. We're going to have the most complicated right. ones. Oh, in the rock. I know. It's like, come yeah. on, it's not a competition, guys. Jesus, <laughs> settle down. And Judge Laurie White is here. Hi, Laurie. I don't sing. You can't sing. I don't, but I any- guess I act. I'm a politician. Well, that's true. You are. Well, you're not really. You're a judge. You're the judge of. Uh, you're the. Ch- are you the chief judge now? Yes. Have you always been the chief judge, or is it? No, I had ha- to kill other people to get there. Who, who yes. did you have to knock off? Just the other judges. How many mm-hmm. did you have to knock off to get there? It, a few. Quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. That sounds so like congratulations. A great <laughs> that's pretty serious. Sounds like a great job. <laughs> no, I, th- I think both of you have me beat there. Okay. So, what does the chief judge have to do that other judges in criminal court don't do? I get to do everything the other judges do, plus I get to handle all the problems of the bench. I'm ah, usually sued so first. My really? name is first on any lawsuits. I'm seeing a downside now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so are you in charge of the other judges? No, I just get to speak for the other judges, but I don't get to tell them what to do. 
So can, you, I, can I ask, what, what do you wear under the robe? Is it like a regular? Nothing. Oh. nothing. Okay. That's yeah. the way to do it. There you go. Thank you for asking that <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm glad somebody had to. That's how you get elected if there's nothing under it. No, not really. No. <laughs> what goes there's on? There's a lot of things you have to do before you get the robe. Just, yeah. a, just a couple. Yeah. So yeah. You, how long have you been a judge for now? Nine years. And, and does, it, does it turn out to be like as good as you thought when you ran for it the first time? That's an interesting question. Yes and no. Good answer. Very political. Uh, well, <laughs> but it's true. Some days yes, some days no. Right. Some days I would definitely be sitting in this bar next to these two guys. Yeah. Yeah. You mean for what reason? To drink. Because you just yeah. can't take it anymore. Well, it's tough. You know, I put it's people in jail every day, deal with crying mothers and victims and people it's pretty, with problems. It's pretty depressing in that sense. It's actually very, very much that way, but a lot of humanity in front of you. But it has to be the funniest place you've ever been because the real life, you know, yeah. comedy of the world mm. yeah, I went right to in com- front of you. I went to a comedy club and it doesn't compare to the courtroom. <laughs> yeah. Have you spent much really time in funny. court, Rob? Mm. Really? Um, I've spent some time in court, a little bit. Um, as I've, a student or well, no, um, as a defendant? Uh, <laughs> as, as a witness and as a... As a uh, witness. And, yeah, not not a lot. No, no, not, I'm taking it back. I'm not a lot of time in court. <laughs> you've, hold, you've merely you know, it's like you know a vacation there. No, no. You know what it is? Here, here, here's the thing. I've played lawyers in court. I prosecuted Andy Griffith. I prosecuted Kurt, Kurt Russell for cocaine possession in uh, in a film years ago. So in my mind, and I and I just did it and uh, uh, drop uh, drop dead diva a couple years ago. And so in my mind, I see myself in a courtroom. I'm like, yeah, I've been in courtroom. I've, I prosecuted. No, I've, I've been city council. Yeah. I, I've been the city attorney, and I've and I've been prosecuting council. That's so funny. I have been too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I thought I was. You thought you really were the city that. attorney. Little yeah. did you know you were just I really was. playing a character on TV. <laughs> yeah. What did you do? Rob? Who, why were you pro- who were you prosecuting? I was a- Andy well, Griffith. What did he do? Well, I, it was an episode of Matlock, and he was accused of murder, and I was the attorney prosecuting him. And Kurt Russell. I it, thought he was Matlock. Yeah, he is Matlock. I'm going to go ahead and guess that Matlock didn't do it. Yeah, he didn't do it. <laughs> or right. Actually, he's it's a, a bad lawyer. It's a hunch. It was very frustrating for me. I, like, I, I, in all of the cases, I've never, I, like, I've never won any of my cases because I'm always going up, up against the star, and the star always wins. Right. Sure. I yeah. see. So you're always the Hamilton the, Burger. The, the defender. Hamilton. Yeah. Was that what? The Perry, Anybody remember Perry him? Mason? Hamburger was the losing prosecutor in every episode. Isn't oh, it Perry true? Mason? Oh, that's yeah. going back a bit. Do you remember yeah. Perry Mason? I do. Yeah. Sure. And I, I also remember Donny Osmond did a song about Perry Mason as well. Not Donny Osmond. Donny. The scary bloke, Shake's lot, Black Black Sabbath. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh what is this? Uh, oh, that's sad that we can't think right. of uh, <laughs> uh, that. I can't, I can't um, believe that. I can't oh, come believe. on. How can none of us remember that? Oh, oh God. Oz, um, Osborne. Uh, Ozzy Osborne. Ozzy Osborne. Osborne. Oh, Funny that you God. said Donny Osmond first. Yeah. I, I guess know. Osborne and everyone, Osmond. Everyone got a bit scared. Like, yeah. what? Donny <laughs> Osmond. He, he doesn't remember his name either. I don't know. <laughs> what was the Ozzy song? Uh, he did a song uh, about uh, the world's going to be saved by Perry Mason. We need, oh, really? we need Perry Mason. I think was the hook line in the song. So yeah. the guy Tur- never turns lost. Out, turns never out lost. we did. Turns out we didn't. He didn't. We didn't. So what is? Who was Perry Mason? Who played Perry Mason? You know, Ra- Ra- Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr. Raymond Burr. 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 All right. Didn't he do Ironside as well? Ironside. Yes. Ironside. Yeah. Who was also a lawyer in a wheelchair or something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was all part of that defective detective series, which was like at a Columbo. Columbo with a one eye. Excuse me, but um, just just one more thing. Where did you get those shoes? I love those shoes. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and then there was a uh, Longstreet who was blind. Yeah. Right, uh, there was a blind. Yeah, there there was a blind detective. Oh, yeah. I wish I'd seen that. He used his other senses. Mm-hmm. You know. How could I do? And that? Ironside had the scariest beginning. To, if you're a child watching Ironside, it had the scariest <laughs> beginning to music because it sounded like an alarm going off. Me, <laughs> me. Oh yeah, what right, is right. That? <laughs> Laura, did any of this in, in, in impress you and in affect your judgment when you were a kid? Perry Mason. I wanted to be that's, Perry Mason. That's how you got into yeah. being a lawyer from Perry mm-hmm. Mason. You and Donny Osmond. Yeah. <laughs> it was either that or that's B. Marie. Right. Yeah. B. Marie Osman. That was a choice. So, really, that's what inspired you. Yeah. Was, was Perry, I mean, how many other people do you think were inspired by that? I don't know. Was it common? I mean, it was probably one of the only lawyer shows, yeah, courtroom shows on television right. back in the mm-hmm. si- early 60s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You would imagine it would be, you would imagine that would be quite common. I, mean, I guess yeah. it was either that. the idea. Right, or else, or else be bewitched. You know, I guess that, that was the option. That was another big I, one. I, I wanted to be a witch. Samantha. You wanted to be bewitched. I wanted to be, no. I watched be a witch. I, I wanted to be an astronaut because, you know, Genie was always available in the bottle. In that bottle. Right. Yeah. Was it, I wanted to be the guy that replaced Dick Sargent. 
Oh, the uh, or was the, it Dick the, Clark that was replaced? I forget. No, no, it was uh, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> it was Dick York. Dick York. Oh, sorry, Dick York. They, oh my God! They had, well, they had two dicks playing. Well, there's a Dar- lot of yeah. there's a lot of dicks in that show. Yeah, yeah dicks, <laughs> two dicks playing Darren. God, so, that's right. What yeah. happened to the original Darren? Did they have to can him for some reason? Uh, I think he actually got sick. If I remember, I remember reading that, saying he got oh, ill dear. and he had to he had to quit it. So that was how it worked in those days. You just got rid of the actor and. Recast it. Yeah, there were a couple of shows like that where there was. Uh, but, there's, but there's no. There's, they don't tell you nothing. It's just one day another guy walks in right. and you pretend. You have <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? And Samantha's still married to him. She didn't yeah. notice. And she doesn't notice. She didn't, she didn't notice. And the like, genie oh, still comes out. And yeah. you're like, oh, it must be me. <laughs> it's the same, <laughs> right. the same so guy. Different. It must be me. Well, that's where you could actually just put things over on the public and they would just, you know, go with it. There was no, like. Like a stand in. People magazine. And now everybody knows everything. Everyone knows how everything's done, and it's like you know. Well, TV because of the show. internet, you know. There yeah, was, the internet's ruined it. Yeah, it's ruined, yeah. Ruined, it's, ruined, it's, ruined, it's ruined the illusion. Hey, what happened to the girlfriend you had last time? Are you still together? Oh no, she's out there listening now. Hi, Patrice. Patrice. Yeah, she's at school today. Working. So you guys are still together? That's nice. Absolutely, she is super gorgeous. She's she, an actress as well. She's done some modeling, but uh, now she's going for her master's degree in English at uh, University of New Orleans. That's Fantastic. a much better Good. idea. Can anyone tell me what that little cable is on that table? Is that anything we need? Because that could be the key to the whole thing. Here. Is yeah, that it's headphones? Just a head, yeah, ah, it's it's headphones, that, right? yeah. Because we need to take a listen to Terry. Terry has a brand new song. I do, yes. That Tell us what's going on with that. Because uh, well, I hear it's zooming up the charts. In the, I just toured, it, it in, just the toured the in the UK. It was out there for a month. Went from Aberdeen, where I'm from, in Scotland, all the way through to Paris, then Belgium. Uh, and just as we were leaving the UK, I entered the Amazing Radio Top 40. Which I knew an emerging music chart, and it, um, when we left, I think it had jumped in at thirty-seven, then it climbed to fifteen, then four, and it's been at number one for two weeks. Oh, that's number great. one, yeah. yeah. My God, that's so, impressive. A little bit, so yeah. We kind of well, see. You're one of these interesting people who you meet in New Orleans once in a while. We've met other people on the show like this who's actually really famous outside of New Orleans. Right. You can walk around here, and do people recognize you here? You do sometimes, yeah. But really, but it's, but some it's, other places it's you go, very, I'm sure. Well, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but I mean, I've, I've been at an airport in Belize when a baggage handler's freaked out and ran over for my right. autograph, and I'm walking down the street in Saigon in Vietnam, and uh, again, somebody like freaked out and ran across the town square to like get to me. So you just you never but know. But in New Orleans, no one even knows who you are. No, I mean you know it's I always I always wear a woolly hat, which doesn't really help. So especially um, in the heat. No, but that must be kind of cool to be. Incom- well, it's, incognito. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I know the accent doesn't suggest it, but I'm a proud New, York, New Orleanian now. I mean, I've lived here for nearly nine years, and I don't really, you know, it, it's it's almost as if it, it's a bit like you know if you work say, in the in the armed forces or, or if you you work in the oil rigs, so like, this is where you live, and somewhere else is where you work. Right. So when you're we're at home, you don't even think about it. You know, you just you no, just wandered around, you know, scratching your arse like everybody else. <laughs> well, so, uh, scratching somebody else's ass like everybody else. Well, that's right. That's new. This is New Orleans, so <laughs> yeah. it's usually somebody else's. Well, do you, um, you don't play local gigs at all? I do, but to be honest, um, I guess you, you just go where the work is. And but it's why just, couldn't you work here? I mean, you could play at DBA or I'd love to, actually. Chicky Wawa, why not? I've got, I've got two kids, um, you know, both, uh, both my wife and my kids are here in New Orleans. Uh, so the more time I can spend here, the better, I think. So I'd love to play more local gigs. I think it's just the way it's worked out. But why has it worked out that I way? don't know. I, don't I, you, have I, a local, you had a local band here. I did, before. yes. What I d- happened to those guys? I um, the- well, unfortunately, uh, two, two guys in the band have, uh, were struck down at different times by serious illness. One of them actually wow. has uh, just got cancer, actually. Um, oh, oh, my God. So he's, he's in a, a, a far more important fight than trying to make me look good. Um, so at the moment... Wow. Um, that's not so good. No, was, it's, that was the bonfires. Correct, yes. Wow. Um, so... Who, do we, is it public knowledge? Do you want who's yeah, I think um, if I, I'm, I'm being trying to support a, a help the campaign uh, to raise money for it's Dave Rosser. I've uh, heard Rosser from the Afghan. Yes, yeah, oh one, one of my closest not. friends, and, and he's uh, wow. contracted um, very serious uh, stage four cancer. Um, oh and God. you know, actually, it's, it's, now that I've got the chance maybe to say this with people listening, that there is if you look on my Facebook page, my actual Terry Mac music uh, music page on Facebook, there's I've actually put up a link for his GoFundMe. Now, on the GoFundMe, uh, I think they set the goal, I think, rather modestly at uh, $20,000, and I think they've raised thirty-three. So when I saw that, I was speaking to another uh, very good friend involved with the campaign, and I said, oh, that's fantastic. And he said, not really. He said, the first consultation for the second opinion costs $21,000. Well, that's, that's, that that's, that's, that's for a consultation. So that's $21,000. So, I mean, 
the, we just have to keep raising money. If you know, how can it cost that much? That's just for tests and everything, isn't? And it's for a special. It's for a specialist, and it's to, to get a second opinion and and really have a, a look. And uh, that's how much it costs. It's so quite shocking. I mean, uh, believe me, the reaction's the same from everyone. They're yeah. like, wait, wait a second, how can it possibly be twenty one thousand dollars? But you know, I'm I'm doing my best to talk about it because obviously I want my friend to get his best chance at, at, at yeah. beating this and, and doing what he can. Gee, that's horrible. So, yeah. what kind of cancer is it? Uh, it's colon cancer. Colon yeah. cancer. But yeah, hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be talking about it if, if it wasn't uh, public knowledge, obviously. And, and right. now that the GoFundMe's up, I think it's important that you mention it. And yeah, absolutely. So, where do we go to? It's, we could either go to GoFundMe and look at. Otherwise, we'll go to your Facebook page, yeah, which go, is yeah, called uh, Terry, Mac Music. Terry Mac Music. Terry Mac Music. Yeah, you'll find me on Facebook, Terry McDermott. Uh, and we ha- we'll have a link to it on our website. It's yeah, please, com. It's please. I mean, Dave, Dave's yeah. a he's a special human being. He's very kind. Uh, he's one of the most honest people I've ever known. And I think anyone that's worked with him or known him, he really is just one of the most unique people on earth. And he's loved all over the world because he, you yeah. know, played all over the world. And he's been a great ambassador for New Orleans. Um, so he lives here too. He does. Yeah, he lives just up the road from me in Algiers. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Who's living here? Oh, yeah, yeah it really is, actually. There's a whole Rob Steinberg moved back here? Yeah. There's a when whole did you move back here? 2010. But I, I went to Tulane back in the 70s. As a matter of fact, we just celebrated Don't our... Don't tell people you went to college yeah, in the 70s. 35th um, <laughs> reunion oh my God. this past weekend. Nice. Wow. Congratulations. It's amazing how old everybody looks. Yeah. Yeah, they look yeah. like... Yeah. They look everybody else. You mean everybody, everybody else. but you. Well, yeah, because yeah, yeah, exactly. I see... Strange yeah. <laughs> thing, isn't that? I, I see myself every day, mm-hmm. so, you know, it doesn't yeah. change as much. Right. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Even going back on, on tour in the UK, actually, I hadn't seen a few guys for a couple of years, and suddenly... Suddenly, Father Time is yeah, starting yeah, to it's slap cruel. us on the back of the what head. What happened to Laurie, you? Just look yeah. how young Laurie looks. How do you do it? Beautiful. Not... No stress, right? Oh, Stress, stress, right, stress-free environment. Yeah, you know how much hair color I have to use. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the easy part, among other things. Well, what, what else are you doing? Do you work out? I do. What do you? Where do you go? Really? Do you work out? Is that the question? That, yeah. was, that was the question. What's yeah. wrong with that question? Next one is: Do you come here often? I think yeah. he's going to ah. ask me. Yeah, you want to okay. know my horoscope it's a next? Line. Well, are you single? No, you're married. What are you, Aquarius? Are you uh, Aquarius? Yeah. No, I'm Scorpio. <laughs> oh, good. Um, is, I work is Scorpio good? It's a scorpion. Is that a good sign to be? Uh, yes, what if you're a scorpion. Qualities? What are the qualities of scorpion? Uh, seriousness right. of, of purpose. Okay, true. Um, um, stiff upper lip. Oh, okay. Very so forceful personality. Stoic and forceful mm, Not personality. really stoic. Stiff upper lip, what does that mean then? It means that I can take a punch and give one Ooh. back. Ooh, Jesus Christ! Really? Well, that sounds like a challenge. Jesus, <laughs> Terry. Okay, let's get okay. let's get started. Well, let's hit somebody. <laughs> Wowee! So that means I'm so you believe I'm a politician. In, you believe yeah. in these? Uh, so that's what interesting thing. You have to be elected a judge. Yes, How I'm in a race right now. So that's why I'm so feeling you, a little stiff upper lip. Okay, so you're running for court of appeal, right? This time. Yes. So what? That's a step up. Yes. You could get out of the criminal district court. Yes. The court of appeal doesn't have to work as hard, right? They only meet once mm. in a while, so you can chill out at home more. Well, I really like that. I hope that is in the job description, but I'm not sure that's it. What, what's we look it? over at the court of appeal, everything that happens at the district courts. Well, not everything that happens. You have to have everything a case that goes up. To yeah. But, everything. They, but they have to have best to be on appeal. They have to be on appeal or in a writ. How and ma- in New Orleans, they have the most criminal appeals taken anywhere in the state because oh. we're the busiest courts. Is that right? That's right. We're the busiest. Over eight. <laughs> it's probably best not to think about that too yeah, hard. There's a, a lot of crime here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is that because the police are so efficient and they're so great at arresting people? There's Ooh. just so many reasons. Yep. Yeah. That's a good sometimes answer. Sometimes the efficiency, That's a good sometimes she, I can they're. see why she's good. That was a, really, that was a really yeah. good well, answer. There's so many uh, look, I'm not dodging. The, there's also, we have a district attorney that likes to charge people with uh, a stuff. lot of crime. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. A so lot of stuff they didn't do, sometimes they did. So you're not a big fan of the district attorney. I read that in the paper or something. That's right. Time ago. It's, it was very brave of you to come out and say that the district attorney is a piece of shit, really. It's, I, I think I was a little um, more reserved on that. I was on the witness stand at the time. Well, you can't say piece of shit in a court, or can you? Well, pretty much from my expression, I can. You can. People got the idea. That's yeah. Right. And how did you form? I mean, is that okay for a judge to say that? Aren't you supposed to? If it's true. Is it? Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. And I was called as a witness. You were a witness in a case. That's I was a witness in a case. And okay. They, and and they, she was telling the truth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't it was just your lie. opinion when you were a witness? Or was your expert opinion? It was pretty much what I know. <laughs> right. So is he unpopular in general on, in the judiciary? Um, 
he's he's a bully. Yeah, he's a bully. We don't know. We don't know anything. No, yeah, I don't know that stuff. Your system at all? Do you, Terry? Yeah. Limited knowledge. I know nothing. Rob, do you keep up with? I I played a DA. You know, but <laughs> okay. uh, other than I've that, got, I've got were you a bully? Uh, no clue. Were you well, liked? How's, how's <laughs> he doing? How's the DA doing compared to your DA? I don't have any idea how he's doing, but my DA was great. <laughs> yeah. People like the DA in other places, though. I mean, you always... I don't know anything about it. What is well, it? It's, it's a very po- uh, powerful position. It sure Probably is. the most powerful position in any parish. Well, was Harry state. Connick Sr. was the DA before he was. this guy. No, yeah. then there was that other crazy guy with the hat, wasn't there? Eddie Jordan. Yeah. Crazy guy with the hat. Remember him? Yeah. Oh, well, I remember, oh, wow. I remember a crazy guy with a hat, but... That was um, Eddie Jordan. I totally forgot about that. That's right. He looked like he was a piano player or something, and he was going to take his hat off and play. Or he a couple looked of like songs, a double oh seven guy that had the hat. Remember him? But he turned hot, out hot. to be sort of a Odd job. sort of a. <laughs> didn't he turn out to be sort of uh, just pretending, and he didn't really know what he was doing? Um, it appeared that way. I think that's how he was. Sort of, he left early. What a great he gig. Did. Well, we all thought he was so great. It's like acting. Right. It's like like, he was acting. He was acting. acting. Like a DA. And what about that guy, Jim Latton? Was he ever the DA or was he something else? He was the U.S. attorney. And he ended up being some sort of a crook as well. Or was something crazy he did. He had to leave under a Um, cloud. Yeah, that can be an interpretation. (laughs) Isn't that what happened? No, actually what happened was he was prosecuting someone and his employees' comments, the assistant, assistant U.S. attorney's comments, were traced back to them in the paper, and they were actually affecting the outcome this of cases. This is the guy writing comments in NOLA.com. With a different name. H.L. Mencken. That's right. That mm. was, his real name was something else. There were several. Remember. Right. And, and that, so, what's his name? Knew bit, about that. Jim bit, Litton knew about that. bit convoluted. Well, uh, I'm not sure they ever proved that, but it but was enough let, to get him removed. But he quit, yeah. Well, he was, Oh, he was yes. kicked out? Both. Doesn't when, this just go to feed, like, our entire belief system that, for the most part, politicians... Are not trustworthy. Oh, well, so I mean, painful. it does. It feels well, that it just feels that way. That I think you know, the current it, climate's not probably helping. No, uh, no, no, no. The current perception. climate is definitely not not helping all yeah. of that. But for the most part, I think if you polled most people, and and the, and the sentence was, um, politicians are mostly self serving and deceitful and crooked. I think most people would answer mostly true on that. I, th- I think I've got a... I know this is going to sound ridiculous, me standing up for the, the, the politicians, but I think actually, while there might... There obviously is a degree of truth in what you just said. I think there is also an element, and it has to be said, that we've manufactured ourselves by creating a society where the, the fact is not necessarily the rule of law. Where yeah. Now we have an environment where if you simply throw enough mud... With the speed right. at which the information People travels around the world, it. with the speed. Yeah. I mean, what was it? I hate to, 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 to quote Hitler, but I will. Um, is the bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. And I think that's true, which is if you shout loud enough and it really is such a dramatic effect, then there will be enough people out there that it, the, the seed will be sown. And unfortunately, you can't, you can't take that out. And that's what mm. happens so often now. I don't think facts got a great deal to do with it. And we're seeing a lot of that on both sides in this election. But I think also, and I'm moving closer to you, um, <laughs> I don't think you get to know politicians because they don't speak and they don't come out and they don't do this kind of thing. And the more that you have um, a politician that will speak and speak honestly um, and you actually get to know them and see the work they've done, then people are going to be um, graded on what they've done rather than what they say they're going to do. But you call yourself a politician. I wouldn't call you a politician. I'm elected. Yeah. So I have that, to. I have to admit it. You're a judge who's elected. Does that make you a politician? Mm-hmm. In your, I would think so. I'm asking for a vote. Doesn't that make me a politician? No, because when you say politician, that tells you with exactly what Terry and Rob but are how talking can about. I, but how can I not be a? Um, that's just disingenuous to say I'm not. I think if well, I'm elected okay. through politics, I, I think uh, I sp- well, there must be some separation about the process of being elected to do a job where there is no politics. If you know what I mean, you're being yeah, elected. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't make you a politician. You're elected <coughs> to do a job for. Two, it doesn't involve any no politics. politics. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just want to be clear, I, uh, when I was talking about politicians, I wasn't speaking specifically about oh, no. any one well, person. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. President I'll move back closer. <laughs> 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 Better? Yeah, 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 that's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call you a politician. I wouldn't have thought of you as a politician. Because it, it tells you with exactly what these guys are saying. It makes but I you think, seem right, like one of these people who will say anything to get elected, which is not what you do. Well, but that's why I have to call myself a politician. Because I don't do that. Until you don't have a chance to be re-elected, you have that in your mind, I have to imagine, regardless of whether your, your daily uh, uh, chores you know, are, are 
overtly about being reelected or not, it's got to be in the back of your mind well, that, sure. that that's a possibility in the future. But that's the whole point. Yeah. If you are afraid to do what you would right. what's true to you, right. um, then you're not a good politician. Or maybe you're a good politician that's not true to yourself. Exactly, yeah. But because of I'm a politician that still depends on a vote mm-hmm. to keep the job. But I also insist on being true to me. Mm-hmm. How, how long? Do, how many? Uh, how frequently do you have to run? Every six years. Right. So at least six years seems like a pretty good term. So you're not spending one year on the bench and then one year campaigning. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's and not I, all I, consuming. Right. No. Uh, and the current climate, you know, um, in the Senate and the Congress, feels like most of the time, to- half the time, they're campaigning and looking yeah. for yeah. funds. Because right. they're such yeah. short terms. Right. right. Well, the Senate is six years as well, right? Two. Two. No, the Congress is two years. Congress and Senate. Senator six. Is that right? Six. Yeah, I'm sure that's right, isn't it? Can't tell you. It's that. a pretty sad day if I I'm know, the only person. I don't know. I've not run for that. I know you're not looking at the <laughs> yeah. Scottish guy for that answer. <laughs> Maybe I'll run. Yeah. You should, Rob. Well, I mean, you go. I'll write it. I'll, I'll write a part Reagan. for myself. Well, there you Reagan go. Reagan did it. <laughs> yeah, it turned yeah. out he didn't know anything. It works out. Yeah, there you go. And he's one of the most loved presidents in retrospect that he can think of now, apparently. And he was God. totally making it up. And he had Alzheimer's. Well, God bless America. <laughs> exactly. You could totally do it. So, Laurie, I've got a great idea for changing the justice system, but I'll run that by you in a minute. Okay. So, but first of all, we want to take a listen. Well, we've got t- two things we have to do. We have to, I have to read these. Well, I hardly have any commercials today, but I do have to read them. And then we have to, Terry, we have to listen to your song. You have to listen to talking it. About I that kind of want to. You have to bloody listen to it. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much to these two people. To Hangover Destroyer, which we have right mm-hmm. here. It's the only, oh, it's the only all-natural product that's medically proven to prevent a hangover. If you go to the Hangover Destroyer website, it's called hdestroyer.com, and you write happy hour in the coupon code, you'll get 30% off of your order of Hangover Destroyer, and you too can seize the dawn. Rob Steinberg, have you tried? You could be a spokesperson for Hangover Destroyer. Hangover Destroyer. Try Hangover Destroyer. It destroys your hangover. Perfect. See, <laughs> Do you take this before or after you, you drink? You meant to take it before you start drinking, so you have to plan really? to get really oh. fucked up. And then, oh, there's my phone. I like mind. this. It's a product designed for my mindset and people from my country. See, you, you could make a lot of money in Scotland if you, <laughs> you took could, this over. You could. you could have the Scottish uh, distributorship. What is That's that called? The franchise or whatever. The franchise, yeah. For Hangover Destroyer. Yeah. I can hook you up with the... I mean, they're our sponsors, so... All right, we should talk. Know. Look, here's a car. I don't know what that is. Um, we should. A- apparently it works. It's medically proven. That's great. Okay. Also, thank I'll you. Try it. This one might be more up your alley, Laurie. Thank you to Basic Swim and Gym, where you can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout, and yoga clothes with style. You can get bikinis. Do you have a bikini for bikini season? Oh, yes, I wear it under my robe. Oh, I wait. thought so. What about a one piece? Yes. And a, you have a cover up. I guess the robe is kind of a cover up. Uh, absolutely. So if you want anything else for, in fact, everything you need for beach and poolside, is it Basics Swim and Gym? It's right across the stru- street from the lingerie store Basics underneath on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Uh, this says take Rob. one one packet for every four to five drinks. Oh wow! Jesus, okay. you're gonna take a box with you. <laughs> <laughs> How many drinks would you have gonna, on a normal you, night out in South Every Scottish You're gonna, look, Scottish you're gonna look like one of the Ghostbusters, you know, <laughs> walking around, walking around with a hose with and a, a canister. With a ba- what is that called? Bandler, bandolier, something yeah. like that. Band- bandolier, yeah. Bandolier. Bandolier, isn't it? With, with, and, and at the bottom, at the bottom, it says, "Please drink responsibly." Uh, so, I like, when, might I guess after ten legal. drinks, if I was gonna drink know, responsibly, would I need a hangover destroyer? That's good. Hey, listen, Terry, what is this Arabic uh, tattoo on your arm? Uh, life is not a rehearsal. It says that in Arabic. It does, yes. Do you speak Arabic or did someone tell you that's what it says? I don't. It, there's, a, there's a very good reason it is actually in Arabic. Yeah. Um, my great uncle, um, William William McDermott, was a, a famous Irish poet. Um, really? When I was 14, because uh, my dad's actually from Belfast, my mother was Scottish. Uh, when I was 14, um, my grandmother gave me all his personal copies of his, all, all his books, all his, his books. Um, and he actually, to cut a long story short, he uh, was a raging alcoholic, fantastically talented poet, uh, moved to the far, uh, to Middle, Middle East. I think he died in Dakar of alcoholism after converting to Islam and not finding God at the bottom of a bottle. So I received all his personal books, and inside, all his own personal inscriptions were in Arabic. Um, so He wrote Arabic. He, wrote, he, wrote, he, he, wrote, he actually he learned the language, and he, he spoke and wrote in it fluently. Um, wow. So by the by the time that he'd passed away, he had all these personal books that had been sent back to Belfast. So they were passed on to me, and they kind of inspired me to start writing. And I think a lot of that that effect actually was the, the first seed that was sown in my path to, to writing lyrics and becoming a musician. 
And the reason is my dad, this is advice that my dad drummed into me since I was a kid, life is not a rehearsal, so I thought it'd be fitting to have it written in Arabic to remind me of the possibilities. Wow, hey, that's cool. That's very cool. And yeah. so what is it in Arabic? Can you say it? Like, uh, no, I, I honestly, not a chance. Not a chance. But, you know, but I'll tell you what is... Uh, this, this is actually, this is a true, this is, I'm not making this up. I actually got the tattoo done on Magazine Street. Um, I, was, I was in complete conf- confidence about what it said. Walked out, bumped into something. He says, oh, you got a tattoo? And I went, yeah. And he says, have you had it checked? And I thought, oh, Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, I'm going to be that guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be that guy. So... I didn't think any more about it. It healed. A couple of weeks went by, and I walked in. Lovely guys at the Brothers Gas Station near where I live. And I walked in, and when I went to hand over the money, he grabbed my arm and went, "Oh, life is not a rehearsal." Nice. <laughs> Thank God. And I went, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Result. It's <laughs> like, come on, you dancer. <laughs> but you need to. You need to learn to say it. I know. I, honestly, he actually did tell me, and I was like, "Oof, don't know about that." Though you need to record that on your on your iPhone, like th- your song you've got on there. I think saying my name in Gaelic trips me up, so I'm not. I don't think Arabic. Yeah, yeah. So. Not for you, really. That's about. That's about as much. That's your name in Gaelic. That's my name in Gaelic. Nice. Yeah. So, that's, what, that's, so what is Gaelic exactly? That's a, it's the la- the original language of the Gaels, the Scots and the Irish. Does anyone speak it? Yeah. Mm, yes. Oh, they do. Well, Lauren, right. have you been to Scotland? Yes, I have. Scotland mm. and um, Belfast. Yeah. Uh-huh. My dad's actually from Belfast, and he speaks a little bit more than me, but. But no, it's a dying language. It's, it's a dying language, for better or for worse. It's not spoken uh, right. much, but it is spoken. Who speaks it? Uh, the west coast of Scotland, the Hebrides, the, the, the Western Isles. In, um, in, a, in, a, in a bar or in a shop or in a tech Actually, area. the road signs are actually in the, in little in, the road signs in really? Gaelic, yeah. So where it's, you spend some time there? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's very, it's a bit, co- it's, it's a far longer story than in, in our podcast, but the, the west of Scotland was home to, I guess you would say, a, a variation uh, within our race. Uh, the, uh, they, and they were kind of extinguished as time went on because their, their king died and they were kind of, kind of conquered. That's nice they were, actually. Word. They were. And, and their culture was kind of trampled underfoot uh, as English was embraced. Um, so they were exterminated re- by well, re- enemy. And it was quite deliberate, actually. It was quite deliberate. It was because it, it represented something that they were trying to really keep a hold of. So it kind of retreated into the villages and the, and the, the islands, and uh, it, it really has stayed there. But it's a very important part of Scottish culture, and it's, it's, it, it's, its backstory is, is fascinating. Do they teach it in school? They don't, but I've heard recently that the government is actually trying to reintroduce it so that it will be taught mm. in schools because they don't. It is. It's. It's been dwindling significantly. That it's a concern. Right, Rob. Can you do a Scottish accent? Because you talk like Terry for, um, the, for the next five minutes. No, I don't. I don't think so. I. No, I, 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 I mean, I can do I can do British and Russian, and I can do a bunch of other things. Right. I, I actually, I, I just played a Russian in a, a movie with Bruce Willis. I got shot by Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis yes. shot me. He shot me. Wow, that crazy. must have been a cool thing to do. What's he like as a person? Oh, well, let's see. He shoots see. straight. Um, gosh. Scorpio? This is one of those moments where if you're, on, to be honest... Mm. Uh, or, or to be uh, ca- well, kind. You want to you want to keep working. I do. So you can't um, say he's a total yeah. asshole, but is he really? I can't say that. Well, I played a show for Bruce and his charity, and he was lovely to me and my band. Yes. So well, as long as he got to get up there and play harmonica, I'm sure he was really kind. He did actually. He just. Yeah. He, but I was I was quite surprised. He's quite a big man. You know, I it's, it's funny. Like when I when I first my first film that I ever did was Die Hard Two. Um, before that, I was in the music business. I used to manage and work with uh, the Scorpions and was on tour around the Talking world with them. Scorpio. Yeah. Scorpions. Oh, no, German band. And so um, I, was, uh, I was living in New York in the Upper West Side, and I would, I would frequent you know, various bars. And when I first got to the set of Die Hard 2, and I walked over to Bruce, and I said, you know, I introduced myself, and I said, you know, we, we, we met before. And he said, oh, oh you know, when did, when did we meet? I said, well, I don't know if this will give you a clue, but here's what I said. Uh, Heineken, please. Because he was working as a bartender on the Upper West Side, <laughs> uh, you know, and I guess he could laugh about it because he was making millions of dollars. You would think that, yeah, would have a sense of humor about that. Yeah, he did. He laughed back then, but that was 1990. Mm. Um, the last time we worked together, he, he didn't have quite the same sense. Not of humor. a lot of laughing. No, no. Does it, he it, take himself pretty serious? Well, I, yeah, it, it felt that way, and um, it was a sh- it was a you know it was basically a, a 15 day, 20 day shoot, something like that, and, and he was uh, in 30 pages of the script. And, um, 
you know, he sort of came in for one day and did all of his stuff that one day. So he's not the star of the movie. No, he well, he was sort of the star of the movie because he was on 30 pages, and it's his face that helps to sell the How box How many pages cover. would there be in a whole movie? Like About 100, 110, somewhere in that it range. makes you a star if you're only in a third or less than a third. If you're, if you're the guy that gets paid the most money and you're okay. the face that sells the, the, the DVD, then you're the star. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he was well, no one's buying DVDs anymore, by the way. Well, uh, okay. If you're if you're if you're the face doing, that sells, the, it. I mean, if you're the face that sells the movie, then you're the, right. then you're the star. So, so he's Bruce the, Willis is still able to sell a movie. Well, he's to not open he, a movie. I don't. I, it seems like he's not able to open a movie that's released in theaters across the country. But he works probably doing five, ten movies a year and gets paid probably a couple million dollars per film. Seems just to be a to be valuable involved. component. Yeah. yeah. Well, being able to sell a movie is a valuable component. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I mean, I. I was uh, I was offered a role as a lead in a film a long time ago, and um, I asked them, "Do you have finishing money, you know, to be able to do the post on it?" And they said, "No, we're all we don't have enough money to be able to do the post." I said, "Well, why don't you make me executive producer, and I'll raise the finishing money?" Mm-hmm. So they said, "Okay." And once we made that decision, I said, "Now that we have the finishing money, let's fire me as the lead and find somebody who can help sell the film." Jesus, you need to come work with us over yeah. here at I like, I like this. I like right? this. Yeah. Smart we guy. can totally use you. Yeah, sure. I mean, it was it, the idea was, you know, um, I I wasn't famous enough to be able right. to but sell a, a movie. Are you a business person who can go out and raise money now like that? Um, I haven't in a long time, so I, I imagine I could. It's it's not a fun job. It's not a fun job walking around and uh, go approaching people and trying to. What explain. kind of an idiot puts money into a movie? Exactly. <laughs> Because what are the chances of really? Well, um, what are the let, chances of making your money back on that? It's it sometimes can be very very hard. Well, there's the the old yeah. joke. I'm sure it applies to the movie industry. I know it applies to the music industry. They say, how how do you make a million dollars in the music industry? Start with two. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good that's a good. Bit. Or, 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 the, max or, or how do you how do you, how do you, how do you I, end up with a million dollars yeah. in the industry? Start with two, exactly. Or uh, how do you make a small fortune in the music industry? Start with a big fortune. That's right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But that's I would think putting money into a movie. Well, it sort of depends. I mean, it depends what the track record of the producer is, and uh, sometimes there's sort of funds, and so somebody might be making five or six movies, so your chances of one or two of them hitting and then being able to recoup are better. But yeah, it's like people, most people I know who've put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, you know, small amounts of money. Are we going to say million at the end of the sentence? No, 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 50,000, you know, maybe 75,000, somewhere in that range and less. Um, they tend to be very small movies, and you rarely see your money back. So if you have enough money and you need a tax write-off, it's great. I was just about to say, actually, there was an actor friend of mine explained that there is actually benefit in making something like $1,500,000 movies a year because yeah. it ends up being enormously beneficial to your tax situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Are you making enough money to have a so tax when you're si- when you're s- here? Well, <laughs> Hey, here's hoping. There's always next yeah. week. Yeah. But if you're si- if you're sitting sideline, man, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you're, I mean, if you're sitting there, you know, thinking uh, you got a hundred thousand dollars to kill, go see some one of these guys because yeah, they, if, they need to make fifteen hundred thousand right. dollar movies. Yeah, find me. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll take your money. There you go. That's I mean, what now, is, now that what is the tax advantage of losing money in a film? Exactly. Write offs. Write offs. If it yeah. depends how much money you have. Uh, unfortunately, right now in Louisiana, there's not quite the same benefits as there were before. Because of tax credit. Bobby Jindal. Situations. Why are they messing with that? Bobby Jindal. Why are they messing with this? You know what? This it's is funny. too late. Now it's, oh. They killed it, right? Yeah. Everyone's gone to Georgia. Moved. Yeah. Well, everyone... Uh, there's, What's the deal with NCIS that, right? is still here. Uh, well, well, here's what Bobby Jindal did. To, to make this really short, he capped the amount of money that could be given in a tax credit and sort of shortened it by about $70 million. Then he said the maximum we're going to pay out is about $30 million on a film, so that means any $200 million budget film would not benefit for coming here. More importantly, he said, we're going to delay giving these tax credits, paying them out by a year, hmm. which meant that anybody who was making the 2 to $10 million films that weren't major studios who needed that money back quickly left. Um, so hopefully Edwards will um, find a and way to reenact it, but unfortunately it's kind of like closing the barn door after yeah. all the horses. Well, I was going to say, I haven't read Bobby Jindal for Dummies, but what, 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 pa- what page does it say that what are benefits that Bobby Jindal saw in completely excommunicating the entire movie industry from New Orleans? Uh, apparently he did a study, or he commissioned a study, and I think that study um, missed a lot of the tentacles and arms of how the money is spent. But there was a nice little sort of five-minute piece that aired at the New Orleans Film Festival this year that showed all of these people who had huge businesses that were incredibly successful during the New Orleans sort of film industry years over the last ten years, and how much money they were making and how much they increased their business and now that this industry has disappeared you know they have to fire people 
They have to downsize. They have to sell off some of their property because there's not that business here anymore. Mm. And what's really sad is that this was an industry that came here to New Orleans when nobody else wanted to, right after Katrina, mm-hmm. and said, you know, we see opportunities, we see opportunities for growth. And it was exciting. It was fun to see celebrities in town and movie trucks driving around and to know that in various places these TV shows and films were being it made It enhanced here. the city. It, it enhanced did. the but city. But I think what he was finding is he's not getting enough money that he can use for government Right, right, cost. I see. Steal, steal. So then steal if I can't money. have the money... Nobody no one will have the have money. That's right. Why well, should we right. help the well, little business you will, you will get BJ's boot heel on your throat rather than get that money. Well, the rap right. against it, though, was that we were, f- we were financing Ben Affleck's massage or mm. Tom Cruise's. Well, I haven't def- seen that one. There were some, cro- <laughs> there were some crooked people who bought houses and claimed budget. that they were parts budget. of tax yeah, but they went to jail. They did, things. and there were some people who may have gotten away with a few things, too. And yes, always, like in any kind of spending, government spending, there's, there's always going to be some aspect of it that isn't necessarily legitimate. Right. But when you look, you know, when, when a movie comes to town, in addition to hotels and catering and food, there are wood wood shop you know wood shops there are construction Service. companies right. various other services people who get hired i mean what you don't see too is when all these people come to town um they bring their families in who stay at hotels sure. and eat at restaurants and yeah. do dry cleaning it's an enormous tertiary it's an benefit enormous right. benefit yeah. to the city so can it come back you think are people I mean, talking I think about it, restarting it they, they have to change it pretty quick and um well look atlanta tends to be overcrowded there's too much traffic so nobody ma- wants to go to atlanta everybody well, wants to come here anybody, anybody who's Hollywood. working is is going to if atlanta if you live in new orleans you're asking yourself, why do you want to go to Atlanta? I don't so. want to go to Atlanta, so I'd What's rather. What's going to happen to you? I would. It's my know, next T-shirt. Well, okay, so <laughs> I, don't I don't want to go to Atlanta. I don't want to go to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. I have. Um, I have. Uh, I'm from the West Indies. I have VRBO Airbnb <laughs> rental properties. Ah, that's how you're making money. Now everybody yeah. hates you for that. Now, well, that's okay, <laughs> so yes, because I have to defend that too. So here's the problem. The problem is, in essence, if you've got a block somewhere in the Bywater or in the Marigny, and two or three of those properties are full-time Airbnb. Airbnb, VRBO rentals, then you've got people coming in, partying, not respecting the neighborhood. Also, what's great about New Orleans is typically if somebody's been in a block for a long time, they look out and watch the block. They know people coming and going and who belongs and who doesn't belong. This so is an they, argument against yourself. Well, no, 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 no <laughs> it's not. You, you you'll, no, you'll see, because I don't do whole home rentals. If there's one thing we frown against yeah. in New Orleans, it is partying. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. but it's also about My respecting It's true. It's very true. It's so if you don't true. respect the neighborhood or you're going to play music so too how, loud. So how you can turn this around and make this a positive well, for you? Well, the way, the way it works for me is I, I live uptown, and I have two two bedrooms downstairs of my home. Okay. So the difference is this. If I bring in full-time renters, I'll wind up with four additional people, full-time, four cars, their ability to like play music, entertain, full-time. Right now, my property's booked 30 to 40% of the time, and the people who come don't treat it like tenants, they treat it like guests. So my neighbors would rather have four less cars on the street and four people there full-time. Mm. Yeah, but the downside to that is you're taking four, three or four properties out of commerce so that people can't live in them. And you're forcing the price of rent up because now there's fewer rental properties. Well, that is a problem, especially <laughs> with, with entire home rentals. Because, I mean... Well, you I, have an entire home. An apartment is an entire home for people, you know. Um, yes, but what, what they're saying is a, a freestanding house, a full house but he's with still three or four bedrooms. I stay, I stay upstairs, and, like I li- the I, and I live in the house. So it's not be- right. there's no benefit to you to have to put up with it downstairs? But it, it's what well, for me, I'd rather, I'd rather have the place be empty half the time or more because it allows me... Yeah, you know, and if you're living in the building, that's absolutely your right. preference. But you're, so yeah. you're making as much money as you would if you rented it out full time, but that's a property that isn't being able to be rented out full time now, so the people right. can't live in it. So New Orleanians can't live there, only tourists can live there. And the bullshit is only a three as opposed to a ten... If, if you had somebody in there causing all kinds of ruckus. Right. And if you and have. And the so hotels are angry because now that's 30% of the time they didn't get a. But, Boom. The, yeah. oh, the, but the hotel prices are enormous <laughs> sure. right now. They're yeah. way too high. Insane. People can't spend right. $400 a night to stay downtown. Is that what the should at the, in the movie theater? Yeah, it's, What's it's that? pretty Your insane. movie people should be able to. Well, the movie people have left town, so oh, that also it. took and a lot of business coming away. Back. <laughs> They're in Atlanta. Yeah. That's right. But no, I, I understand the concept and I understand the problem, but I can tell you this. My neighbors would much prefer this scenario in this situation than any other scenario of full-time renters living there. And thank God you bought that house, otherwise you'd be moving to Atlanta as well if you're I would not no, I, I moved here from Los Angeles with, without a plan necessarily. You know, I didn't come here necessarily to act. It was kind of uh, a byproduct of being here and seeing how busy the city got. So um, I would have found something else to do. Well, you have. 
Yes, and um, maybe I'll do some writing. I've got some stories Ooh. to tell. <laughs> hey, we could be in it. Yeah, we could act it out for you. Yeah, we could all do it right now in the next yeah. six minutes. Bring your. <laughs> so what we have to do right now is listen to Terry's song. Joke's right. over. Now we actually have to do this. What? Tell us something about the song. And uh, this, the song is called Lost Again. Um, it was actually written by myself, by uh, a member of my band Lotus Crush. And we flew in to see a very good friend of mine, Grammy winner John Jones. We've been writing partners for many years now. He's actually very well known as a co-writer and producer of the Wedding Album by Duran Duran. Uh, he's done Fleetwood Mac Records. Wow. And he uh, won a Grammy for coming in and, uh, for Celine Dion's record that did 30 million records. So, um, so he's wealthy. And he's, he's, and he's hilarious when he's had a pint as well okay. so, so he's your co-writer on he this. is he is we've worked together and the last time I went in and said John I can't finish this middle eight and he did it embarrassingly quickly and I was like right we should keep working together <laughs> so then uh, we went and we actually just started writing from scratch on this track and um, I think very quickly we realised we had a gem and uh, we ended up doing all the production John did a lot of the production most of the production in fact in his front room in, Liv- in, L- in Los Angeles really? where okay. we spent long days uh, kind of working on this thing so uh, that's the background. I suppose about to play the bloody song. Yeah. Did you did you start? You wrote the the initial lyrics and then you actually. The I, I know Andrew will understand this completely, but you can labour on a song for for weeks and not really get what you want, and you can't work out why. And then there's other particularly annoying songs. And the last time this happened to me, it was a number one in the iTunes Rock Chart, where you basically just start the song, and 45 minutes later, you're sitting with a complete song, wondering who that came out of. And, right. and how it happened and this was very much one of those where I, I literally will work, I said stop everybody go take have a coffee have a beer give me half an hour and I came back 40 minutes later and I'd written all the melodies and all the lyrics and it was done wow, and it was okay. just one of those moments where it was like uh, and we're done let's listen to it so.
Is it called Lost Again? Yes, Lost Again. Oh, lost Again. That's great. That's a real song. Very, yeah. Very nice. Isn't it? Yeah, I, try, I tried great. the fake. Like a real I tried the fake ones. They don't get you very yeah. far. From. <laughs> you don't hear like an actual real. I don't know what the difference is, but it doesn't sound manufactured or produced. Hmm. It just sounds like a genuine song. Probably plays on a lot of the influences I had growing up, which is my dad's record collection. You know, it's all classic rock and stuff like that that I listened to as a kid. And I think when I sat down with John in the session, I said, you know, I want to, I want to tap back into that a bit and. You know, go straight for the jugular. So what's the deal? You just make one song now? You don't have to do a whole album? It depends, actually. I mean, norm- it used to be the case that if you started one song like that and it was going to be a single, it's because you had an album right behind it. Right. But the truth is that the way the music industry is now, it's like a, a song can go as far as a song can, and then you can decide whether that's leading to a record. Right. Because, you know, uh, major labels, they don't give out dinosaur deals anymore. They don't, you know, they're not going to throw a million bucks at a, a baby band or right. an act or, or you know y- if you're doing it yourself if you're an independent artist you, you, you have to have a degree of common sense you don't blow a hundred grand on a record and then go oh you know what we should have just done a song but this is <laughs> this is hit number one in, in, in the UK and yeah, Europe yeah it's on so amazing, now, amazing radio number one what yeah. happens over here now? well Does watch it, this space yeah what, what do you do do you go on the road do you Push well, it out. No, I mean, you does, take ra- it, does radio you, matter anymore? Yeah, yeah, that's all being discussed. Um, right. it's like, well, it's been more than discussed. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of. Yeah, get it on a TV show or in a film. Absolutely, I mean, that, that's, that's sort of the way these that's, days that that's people ki- break out. That's kind of the. Uh, yeah. You're absolutely right. In fact, in many cases, that's that's the absolute holy grail, which is it does the work for you. Right. You have to yeah. you have to find um, you know um, music people a music supervisor music supervisor on films yeah. or on television shows and so have you got a hook up in that respect I do I've got I know people <laughs> actually sure. that's right. work but, out. but they but they don't do any favors they don't do any favors but, for yeah. Them. Is it, yeah. yeah is it graft and corruption you have to pay them off um, I imagine to some don't degree tell Laurie. I imagine to some degree there's probably a little favoritism in there it's like you know if I put your song in here you're going to do a, this it's for a, me it's a tough sell with music is. supervisors because basically the, the integrity of the choices they make. They they can't they can't be at the beck and call of everybody's whim. No. whim. They can't. No, no, they can't. No, they ha- they have to make the right choices. Yeah, but at yeah. the same time, you know, for a spot in a film or for a spot on a TV show, there could be a dozen right choices. Yeah. So how do you get yours in? How there? do you get an audience with them? Is the question right. correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, how much do you have to pay? What's the deal? Um, we'll talk about it afterwards. <laughs> All right, there you go, Laurie. What's the platform that you're running on if you're a politician? Do you have a slogan? Um, the right judge for the court of appeals. That's it. The right judge. I like Straight it. to the point. Try well, saying that in a Scottish accent. Uh, can I say it in a Russian accent? I don't know what sort Sean, of accent would be. Sean Connery? <laughs> yes, yeah, Sean Connery. Yeah. The right. What, what is it again? The right The right judge for the Court of Appeal. There you, there you go. go. That could be good for your final few reason, days. of. There you go. But the reason for that is was because 12 judges are on that court and only one of them came from criminal court. Where are they all other come from? Civil court. Oh, really? And, and so b- that happens in New Orleans because we're on high. different benches. So wow. I was thinking that we could use that sound as a um, soundtrack in my courtroom. All right. The song. Yeah. Lost Again. Yeah. Damn. What if it, it was like? Like, with It's the, for repeat offenders. Maybe like your uh, entrance uh, music. Uh, lost you know. Again. Lost the yeah. case. Down yes. the wrong road again. Oh, that's right. It's, or, or when, when the, uh, the prosecutor gets, gets kicked out of the court and loses the song, you just yeah. press lost play. Again. <laughs> Yeah, you start a little you could dance. just play that instead yeah. of saying guilty. You could just do lost again. Exit there music, little smoke machine, pretty yeah. Lasers work well. Lasers, lasers not enough. There's not enough courtroom lasers. That lasers is a, are big that these is days. a fact. Mm. <laughs> okay, so here's my idea for reforming the justice system. Okay. I've never spoken to a judge about this before. I've spoken to a few people on this podcast, and people have just laughed at me. But you're the person to talk to about this. So here's my idea. What if you went into court with every court case, and you had a Bible, right? And people put their hands on the Bible and they swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and they actually did. Well, what if they don't? Well, you they have to. That, the would be, that, would be, that would be the justice system. If people swore to tell the you truth, because what happens now is they swear to tell the truth and they put the book down, and then they just say whatever the hell they want. They just make it all up. It's so all what, lies. So basically. what you're saying is we should all just be better. Why don't we just tell the truth? Like we Why said don't we, we all just get along? Well, couldn't that work? What well, if we sure. Just, what if we just told the truth? That's that's my problem now. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that's what you have to do. You have to discern who's telling the truth when the people right. have just put the hand on the Bible. But that's what we just said and about politicians. Tell the truth and then they don't tell. It. If everybody told the truth, and there would be no such thing as the art of the deal, Grant. 
Oh, I see where we're going. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> look, we got we got to spend uh, we got to spend two minutes on this, right? Yeah, we got to spend That's two plenty. minutes. Let's yeah. do it. Let's just spend two minutes on that. But before we do, let's just say go Cubs. They yep. have a chance to break history tonight. Yep. Okay. tonight. Okay. Win seven. a game seven, game seven on the road. Yep. Never been done before. So oh. I'm rooting for the underdog. Yep. I'm right. rooting for game seven. Hey, yeah. Baseball's not so big. We're talking about the World Series World in 2016, Series. if you listen to this. Yes. After that. And it's pretty common. People and come back and listen to these shows. You know, and you as know. an actor, you, I'm sorry, I was going to say, this must drive you up the wall as much as it drives me up the wall, which is Back to the Future 2. In, there's a scene in Back to the Future 2 where the projected future is 20, 2015 when the That's guy right. says, I wish you could have gone back and put some money on the Cubbies. Uh, We're just one year off, and it would have been so absolute close. perfect. Yeah. Damn. That's Damn very, shame. We that's blew a very it. expansive knowledge. You know, I got to go to Game like, 5. I was, like I was at Wrigley, Wrigley for Game Just 5. Oh, wow. Week. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Yeah, How it was, was pretty it? special. It was amazing. Uh, it was only my second game at Wrigley, but it was probably... I'm going to go with the best sporting experience I've ever... Yeah, Wrigley's oh, wow. amazing. I've, yeah. I've done right behind uh, home plate, and I've also done the rooftops across the... Wow. You know, yeah, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah it's funny. They have the... the the rooftops where you have as good a, yeah. a view as some other major league stadiums, which are across the street. You're not actually in the Do stadium. Do people sell spaces up there on their? Oh rooftop? yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's Wrigley who's bought those spaces now. Uh-huh. So the buildings so they're kind of like corporate boxes. It's like Airbnb. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same as the, the Rob the thing is, there's, School. Of <laughs> there's buildings that wouldn't sell. So <laughs> those buildings now have big jumbotrons in front of them. Oh, so there, there's no view at those buildings that wouldn't sell to. You know, oh, the, that's always that's spoiling the fun. All right, I'm going to say something. I'm, I'm going to right the ship a little bit because mm-hmm. I want to clarify something okay. with, with reference to the VRBO Airbnb <laughs> thing. If anybody <laughs> contacts this my property based on this show today, I will donate ten percent to your musician nice. friend. Sold. Go fund me. All right. So, all right. so great deal. Money. Right. Put money into a film. So you can you can, you can you can look it up on my Facebook page. Or so how do we find you? I mean, we'll put a link to it on us. So we'll look um, up. You look at your face. It's Rob, so, Rob Steinberg on Facebook. You can you can go there, okay. or you can go to vrbo.com. So it's not Airbnb, or is it both? Airbnb. Yeah, they're and on VRBO. both. But if you start at my okay. Facebook page, I'll get you Rob the information. Rob Steinberg. Oh, great. Just look for that. Fantastic. Okay. You got a jacuzzi or a pool or anything good like that? Um, no, I, no jacuzzi okay. or pool yet. But right. we are putting them in in the next Project year. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. curious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, Kate it, it, watching. It's curious. Okay. It might be a nice local getaway staycation situation. Yeah, it yeah. would be a great one. As soon as the as soon as, as, soon as the, the jacuzzi pool's and yeah, pool, right, yeah. Right. Okay, so Judge White, that's the end of my. No one cares about my brilliant idea for well, reforming justice. I know. Obviously, I know why people even have laughed. the judge. I know why people have laughed. It just seems so obvious that if people well, said yeah. they're going to tell the truth, they would, and then we wouldn't have to have all these lies and all these lawyers. Uh, well, that'd be so much easier. Yeah, maybe that could stop all the crime and all the problems I'm and poverty. I'm not saying it's stop the crime. I've got other plans but, for that. But oh. But just, <laughs> I I'm just talking about. It. I'm just reforming the justice system it's a, here. It's a two point plan? It's a two point plan, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I thought it was a one point. Sorry. I'll Let's wait till I hear got the one other. one point so far. I haven't okay. got the rest of it really sorted out. No, I think it's so, a really good start. Thank you very much. Can I use that? Can I yes, quote you? It's a good start. It's a good start, Judge Laurie yeah, White. And I'm going to start. Okay. With it. Okay, so if people are listening to the show before the election, it's November the 8th, the same day as. As the, the big general, presidential, big, yes, yes. The, the whole world. So even if you change. don't want to vote for the top ones, go down to seventy-one. Number seventy-one, Judge Lori White. Okay. That's actually a really good campaign slogan as well. Vote for me. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, I think that could be the name of today's show, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write it down just in case. And we you don't can have also a look idea. me up on Facebook, Judge Lori White. Okay, and we'll put a link to your stuff on our page as well. Me? What's that? Can we endorse you? Can we endorse you? We endorse. Who did we endorse? We endorsed the senator, the senatorial candidate, Kate, Caitlin Marone. I don't. Th- yeah, we can endorse you. Sure thing. So you can be our official. So who are you running against? Anybody? Uh, well, I wouldn't be running if there wasn't. I don't a race. know how it works. I so said there's a bunch of people competing for this. <laughs> no, there's that one other person. That's, uh, that's who is it? They didn't come on the show. So they're a loser. Forget so we don't even need to know who that is. So Judge okay. White. We're endorsing Judge White. Judge White. That's right. For Court of Appeal. That's right. Not November only you, but I'm the hip-hop judge, and there's a the lot of other judge. people. Oh, wow. It's getting better. So the good thing is now that, you it's know, this better. goes for all of us at this table. Now we know a judge. That's right. So I'll give you my get, cell number. Okay. <laughs> so we ever get in trouble, now we know someone. And they ask you all the time, here, do you know someone? Now we know someone. This That's is it. awesome. Can you fix tickets, parking tickets? No, oh, I pay my own. Sorry. The last judge I got hooked me up with, they got my driver's license back. 
from had it taken off me, mm. and now he got kicked off the bench. He's gone oh, for damn. Judge Porteous. You did that for him, Judge Porteous. Got, oh wow, he's gone forever. He's he, been, he was the only judge I think has been tried by the Senate or something. Because well, the Senate tried him over your driver's license. No, I think I, I think I was small potatoes, but <laughs> it seems a he little. Did get my ju- I think my it was a little bigger. Seems a little extreme. I don't even know him. It wasn't him. Someone so who just think for him. it starts there. That's right. Yeah, watch yourself. God, <laughs> but I have to say that guy was a great judge. He's a great guy. He was an was he? I don't know. He's still I, never, I never met him. I just oh. had a new guy who worked for him who got my driver's license back. In fact, he yeah. should be sitting at this bar, Judge Porteous, if you hear Is us. he an alcoholic? Yeah. <laughs> He's a judge. <laughs> oh, well, that yeah, that's right. <laughs> do you do a lot of drinking after hours there? Do they have like a place like on a TV show? No, where no. We all go home all alone go? and drink alone now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, you can have a drink here. You haven't drunk anything here. I see you're staying sober for the... Do you have campaign events and stuff? Oh, yes. Do? Lots and lots. So no, you got to keep going. Yeah, wow. just, you touched on something interesting there, but I read a book about Scottish history and it talked about the, dis- the Scottish judges and their dispensing justice. And it talked about in the morning, the, all the, 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 uh, when the cases were being tried, the defendants wanted to be tried in the morning. Before the judges were <laughs> drunk? And because and because they bad. would because in Edinburgh they would all go out in the afternoon for the lunch would be an hour and a half two hours and they'd go out and they'd get hammered and they said they actually had some transcripts and they, when they come back in the afternoon it's all blood and thunder and drama <laughs> and play in the gallery so they always want to get tried in the morning. God, that's yeah, funny. That's yeah. okay. I would think they'd be hung over and you'd want to wait till well, a little I later. I think they were still hammered. <laughs> that's the difference between the hanging judge and the hungover judge. Because they didn't because they didn't have um, hangover, hangover destroyer. Hangover destroyer. Back then, so. That's your cue. Hangover Destroyer. It destroys your hangover. That's it. <laughs> Andrew Duhon, we're going to get you to play a song for us. All right. And then after that song, you're going to have to play the uh, Happy Hour theme. Oh, right. Okay. So we can get it's, it out it's of here. Un- can we call it the unofficial Happy the Hour unofficial theme? unofficial Happy Hour theme. Yeah. Okay. What are you playing today? Where are we? Where are we on the record? Uh, Andrew's making a new record, which we're hearing one song a week from. Excellent. Well, not even. Sometimes he gives us the second draft of a song that he's played before. So. Yeah, why don't I do that? In fact. Okay. What are we up to? What number? I don't know. I feel like I've played them all. So it's time to just go back through and, all right. and tweak them a little bit, you know? Okay, second draft of what? Before I do, actually. Actually, this song is called... I think it's called Cecilia. Oh, yeah. Okay. But um, actually, Terry and I met... Uh, what do we meet? At Carrollton Station at the open mic. The way that went down was... Uh, Terry and I were both playing. This was years ago, maybe what six six seven, six, years, seven ago. years ago yeah. and uh, I had just played a song and in the song I needed a three syllable name of a town uh, that rhymed with leave or something so I came up with Aberdeen which there are a few of there's one in Mississippi yeah. you know, Alabama mm-hmm. they're around and there's one in Texas whatever you know but this guy walks up to me with a Scottish accent and said mate did you say you wanted to go to Aberdeen What's an Aberdeen? You don't want to go there. I'm from there. It's shite. <laughs> <laughs> but you so. went there. You actually played. And That's and right. And you and hung actually, out with all my mates yeah, in Scotland. Yeah, and I told him I was heading to the UK, and he hooked me up with an artist out there. Uh, um, Amy, it was Amy. Amy Sawyers. Yeah, yeah Amy so Sawyers. Amy and I played a show together, and I got to go to Aberdeen and meet folks that knew uh, Terry. Well, he said he wanted to play Aberdeen in the song, so he went to Aberdeen. Good job. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. All comes together at the Carrollton Station open mic, which is now debunked, but I'll bring it back one of these days. <laughs> Anyway, this song's about a picture of a waitress in a bar in a coffee shop in Lafayette. It goes like this. I was taken back by a photograph, never seen such a face. She was a waitress from the day. Black and white Taken here Though so many years ago At this cafe That I'm sure These days She wouldn't recognize Oh Cecilia Champagne I've come along Much too late To know the days Of your maiden name had our times been the same, I'd visit you every day. Oh, Cecilia, I'd steal you away. It seems I've come along much too late. Those were old days, nothing 
nothing gold stays Time passes on Even black and white fades And we move along But still in my mind Lips are red wine Strawberry blonde Cherry cokes for the boys In their uniforms Oh, Cecilia Champagne I've come along much too late To know the days of your maiden name But had our times been the same I'd visit you every day Oh, Cecilia I'd steal you away It seems I've come along Much too late If only I'd been a man Back then, back when You were a woman Cecilia Champagne I've come along much too late to know the days of your maiden name But had our times been the same I'd visit you every day Oh Cecilia I'd steal you away It seems I've come along much too late Fantastic. Yeah. Very nice. Andrew Duhon off the album Welcome to My World. What <laughs> what was it gonna be called? What about It's a Good Start? That would be a good album title for you. Yeah, but it's not a, it's not the first album. It would be a good name for the album. That would be a good name for the first album. Oh the irony. <laughs> ah, there you go. What did you think, Laurie? Would have been a good start? Oh, Another one? Nice. Could you use that for your commercials? Uh, so uh, well, maybe. No, maybe like really. an intermission thing. Before I pass sentence. Yeah. Yeah. A little intermission, please. <laughs> There's a little please. song I wrote. Yeah. Well, I didn't write this myself. My friend Andrew Duhon wrote the song. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Don't put that guitar down, though, because we All have to right. get out of here right now. It's a whole new thing. Right. What would you think of that song, Rob? Nice. I, I loved it. Yeah, I'm thinking like deja vu all over again. Yeah, nice. That's great. Nice. Could you get that in a movie for Andrew as well? Um, <laughs> I, I what, what am I, the supervisor guy? You know what? I can't get me in a movie. So if you're not, <laughs> ah, if, if you're not going to put me in a movie, at least come and rent my apartment. Right? Okay, <laughs> all right. So check out our, our website. It's newons.com where you can find links to all these things to to Terry McDermott's music and to the GoFundMe for for your friend. Yeah, who's, Dave Ross. Yeah. Dave Ross. Yeah. That's a terribly weeks. sad story. So we have yeah. links to that and links to Judge Laurie White's campaign, the Honorable Laurie White running for Supreme no for Supreme Court. No, Boy that's not it. Fourth Circuit. Court of, fourth Circuit Court of Appeal number 71. Yes. On your ballot, ladies Tuesday. and gentlemen. This Tuesday, the 8th of November. If you listen to this after the 8th of November, well, the whole world's probably fucked up. So. And I have a great oh, party that you're all invited to Tuesday night. Oh, really? Yeah, Tuesday yes. night we're invited to a party. If you listen to this before, the, where is it? Should I tell everyone or no, just you people? No, just tell yeah. us. And tell we won't tell I'll just tell you all. Yeah. It's going to be at Rebellion on Camp Street. Yeah, Rebellion yeah. Rebellion on Camp Street. Okay. Graham, have you got that? Can you get us in, Graham? I can get you in. We're all in. And okay. bring Graham. Okay. It's excellent. Okay, thanks. And uh, Rob Steinberg, the award-winning actor. And well, I, I have I, 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 and Yeah, I haven't, I haven't won anything, but the film I was in did. Well, it's close enough. Yeah, right? I guess it Let is. Let me just say it again. Take Rob it. Steinberg, yeah. award-winning actor. Well, thank you, Graham. <laughs> That's <laughs> fabulous. That's I'm so happy. <laughs> That's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us on Happy Hour. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. Our music director is Christian Unruh. And our music producer is Jean Valois. Technical producer of the show is Thomas Walsh. And today's show is engineered by Ben Sowers. Our live feed directors are Asher Griffith and Grayson Jernigan. If you didn't catch it live on Facebook, it's still up there on Facebook on our page. It's New Orleans. Our theme music was originally written by Mitch Foreman, but it's currently being played. It's the uh, unofficial Happy Hour theme is being played by Andrew Duhon live. If you'd like to be on our show and you can sit around a table for about an hour, drop us a line. Our address is on our website. It's neworleans.com. Where are there many more hours of Happy Hour to listen to from the past? You can also listen to some other shows we make here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Raschuti, live from Commander's Palace, true to the game, with the very funny Chris True, Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canada, Louisiana, eats with Poppy Tucker. 
Milo's music panel with Kim Fu, the podcast about death, which is simply called Death the Podcast with psychiatrist. No, she's not. She's a psychologist, Dr. Arian Alphant. Questions from the waiting room with a psychiatrist. That's Nick Pajic and the weird show Psych Ward with Dr. Ross Shields, who's not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and on Twitter and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. On all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook page. This show is taken today by Sam Weil. If you listen to this on your favorite podcast app, thank you very much for subscribing to us. Take one moment to do this. Stop everything and rate and review us. That helps other people find us. Our show is recorded live today at Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is in uptown New Orleans where you can come and enjoy three hours of happy hour here every day and an awesome brunch on the weekends. Happy Hours a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. For Andrew Duhon, everybody around here, around the table at Wayfair and back at our offices at INO Broadcasting. Thanks so much for listening to us. I'm Grant Morris. We'll see you back here next week on Happy Hour. Thank you. Let's be honest. There are tons of ways to send money back home, and every company promises me the same things, good rates and safe transfers. That's why it can be overwhelming to choose a new way to send money. I switched to Remitly because I can track my money every step of the way, which means I know exactly when my mom will get her money. And with their extensive payment network, my mom can receive her money in a way that is more convenient and safe for her. You should check it out. Go to Remitly.com or download their app to get started. Remitly, Inc. is a licensed money transmitter by the state of New York, California, Massachusetts, and other states.